Hi there folks, Darren Craddock from Enter Health Botanicals. I have a pleasure to have Robert Scott Bell with me today. We're going to be talking a little bit about gut health and uh, Robert's going to tell you a little bit more about how to listen to his show also. He has a great show, wonderful network and we're all working together to get the message of health out to the world which is so, so key. So, Robert, why is gut health so important? It's such a neglected topic, but it's starting to come to the fore. Unfortunately, people don't have all the right information. Yeah, well, it starts uh, early on when we talk about the assault on the, the human body. Sorry about that, guys. Just want to fix the microphone for you. There we go. When we talk about the assault on the human body uh, due to modern medicine's insistence that we can't survive childhood without vaccination. And of course, much of the gut damage that is done initial childhood is coming from vaccines. And it not, you know, the antibiotics eventually hit it, but the vaccines are the starting point. But mo most of the focal point on vaccines have been about the brain and neurological damage that's done. And that is true, but it's usually secondary or tertiary to the gut damage that happens. So you have this epithelial lining in the gut, just like we have skin and it's an epithelial tissue. You now have damage to that epithelial lining, including the little villi that are critical for absorbing the micronutrients, as well as the, the lining itself to being a hospitable place for the microflora, the good probiotics we talk about, the microflora to inhabit, and that is really uh, allowing us to adjust and assimilate nutrients as well as protect ourselves from a microbial assault, even viral assault, or any kind of immune assault, because the seat of much of the immune system is in the gut. So we don't want to overlook gut health as a primary means by which we can restore, let's say, some physiological sanity as well as absorbing all the good things that we're learning about and of course even the great food here at Enterfood. I mean my goodness if we have people that are loaded with inflammation, gut inflammation, they may have only a limited ability to absorb even the greatest stuff on the planet. So that's why I'm talking so uh, emphatically about how do we restore gut integrity, not just flora but the lining itself. Right. Now part of that from my experience is nutrition. You've got to nourish the body, but like you're saying, you've got to make sure that the body can actually take that nutri those nutrients in. And in addition, you've got to minimize inflammation. Right. And there are so many factors out there that are causing the inflammation, yes. so you can take the best supplements under the sun. If you don't minimize inflammation, your gut's going to remain inflamed, right. and then things get into the bloodstream that should never get into the bloodstream, which also brings on the no. whole autoimmune problem that we've talked about in the yes. past. So what are the main things that you're seeing? I mean, obviously we have our made our diet, Yes. but what are other major things you're seeing that are causing the inflammation in the gut in our current world sure. situation? Well, the causation factors, of course, coming back bottom line to modern medicine, but modern agricultural practices, when we talk about pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, uh, additives, preservatives, colorings, flavorings, all of these things don't belong in the gut. When they come into, into contact with our gut tissue and even the microflora, we end up having inflammatory responses or an outright uh, killing, if you will, damaging or killing of our cells. And in that context, uh, we've got to look at cleaning up our act. Uh, but it, at the point of starting for many Americans, many people in the West, they have such gut damage, whether it be irritable bowel uh, syndrome or disease, leaky gut, colitis, Crohn's, uh, so many of these gastrointestinal diseases have become quite chronic. So it's, it's really uh, made, it, made something that's bad initially going from acute phase to chronic phase inflammation. So my recovery, because this is my story, I know. my recovery uh, was because I learned of homeopathic medicine, quite honestly. It was energy that was healing matter, really. I was like blown away by its ability because here we are relying on good quality food, which is material, through digestion, breaking down those materials into ever smaller amounts before they're released into energy, which is metabolism, which is like when people are out of, let's say they're tired and run down, they don't say I'm out of molecules right? I'm out of energy. And so how do we utilize energy? Well, we have to break down matter and release it into that energetic form. So for me, utilizing the energetic healing methods that are available to us to enhance the function, the recovery, the integrity of tissue, along with all the botanicals, medicinals, I utilize silver hydrosol because silver stimulates uh, stem cell production locally while simultaneously reducing inflammation of epithelial tissue or any tissue that is subject to chronic inflammation. And people don't look at these minerals and metals in this way. I'm, I'm not advocating using mercury, but silver as a trace element has many medicinal properties used appropriately. So when we do that with energy, with certain uh, trace elements, uh, silica is a very big one. 
we repair the connective tissue, we restore integrity, and then if you do take a good quality probiotic or a prebiotic combination, it will actually get into the gut and inhabit as opposed to like a lot of people now taking it and it just goes right through. And I want, but it's a good product and it may very well be, but the inflammation is blocking the situation so that it can inhabit and restore the integrity we want to. So we look at holistic healing, it's about the energy and the matter. We can't ignore either and that's, that's I guess the big role here so we can utilize the benefits that we have. Right, and certain products, for example, have more energy to them than others. Oh, yeah. Homeopathics, of course, is a fantastic science, a wonderful science. But even in a supplement, there are certain supplements that are categorically dead yes. and others that are alive. And that enzymatic quality and that energetic quality helps restore tissue because yes. tissue functions but also optimally functions based upon energy. Really, so yes. if you can give it living fuel and living foods, Very so for example, inner foods, a green food that is still living, it's yes. not been pasteurized, heated, etc. If you take raw juice rather than cooking your vegetables, it's got a lot more energy to it. Right. If you eat a salad, it's got a lot more energy to it. A lot of people unfortunately with gut problems have a real issue with anything that's got fiber in it. Yes. Soluble fiber not so much, but insoluble fiber is a real issue. Yeah. And it's astonishing how many people are dealing with Crohn's, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome. And many people don't think they have it, don't know they have it, but they just say, oh, my tummy hurts, my gut hurts, my belly hurts. If I eat this, my belly hurts. One of the things I've found is educating people about what foods cause that inflammation, really ultimately helping them become conscious of what they're putting in that's doing the damage. And it's a little different for each person. For right. example, some of the major allergens like corn, like wheat, like soy, yes. are allergenic for almost everybody. But there are others that may be allergenic for some people and not for others. Could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, we talk about pro-inflammatory foods and there, you know, there are lists of them. It's not really a, a difficult thing to understand some of those you already listed. But a lot of these foods that are pro-inflammatory may or may not be inflammatory in a person until they know, for instance, like what you said, are they dealing with gut inflammation? Because when I repair the gut, suddenly they can eat foods they couldn't eat before, yeah, right? Absolutely. Now, I don't have them go back on GMO foods, right, or, or dead foods, right? We, it was funny, we had uh, uh, Mike Adams uh, coming in by Skype today from the Health Freedom Expo where we're recording this, and he was talking about it's weird how our government regulators or protectors they you know, endorse dead food, right? We must have dead food, and anybody eats living food like raw milk, that's the danger. Living food's a danger, but dead food is safe. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to die younger, eat dead food. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's the thing. And he, he had said this, he said, you know, maybe uh, if we had them eat the food that they promote, you know, that would be like a Darwinian self-selection. They'd select themselves right out of the gene pool, but leave us alone. I mean, we just want to do the living food that we have here. So, uh, you know, when I say allergies, I was the poster boy for allergies for much of my young life and I was on allergy shots, allergy medication before I you know, learned how to heal the liver, the gut and all of that. Got rid of my allergies and now I could eat food that I couldn't eat before. I mean the good quality of it too. So when we talk about allergies, we've got to realize that it's not the allergen, that's the cause of the allergies. It's like that's a trigger, it's a symptom, it's an end stage thing. but. The reason you're overreacting is due to what we've already talked about, the gut inflammation, the malabsorption, the macromolecules entering the bloodstream, creating the hyperimmune, hyperhistaminic uh, responses and then autoimmune responses. And those are the real issues. You won't know what you genuinely have an intolerance for as far as the food until you heal the gut and, of course, the liver as well. Yeah, that's a very interesting concept because most people think, oh, I'm allergic to this, but they don't realize it's because the state of their gut is so bad. Yeah, it's very but at the same time, my understanding, if I look at the gross increase in gut health problems or gut problems over the last 10, 15 years, yes. you can almost parallel the graphs with the introduction of genetically modified organisms. Oh. And it's something you know we're going to talk extensively about, but I'd like you to just share your information, your understanding of that. I know that in all the tests I've seen that are third-party tests, of course, yes. not industry-based tests, yes. and that's a problem in itself, have shown categorically that kidney lesions, intestinal lesions, liver lesions are a direct result of the in 
direct result of the ingestion of GM foods. That's right. Well, you know, when I had my allergies uh, much of my young life, it was prior to the introduction, or let's say official declared introduction of the GM food. So it isn't that allergies didn't exist. We don't want to say that. But the reality is, yes, we've seen an exponential increase in not only allergies, but uh, attention deficit behavioral disorders, which also relate to this inflammation. And these foods, when they modify them genetically, the DNA, they really, there are always unintended consequences. You know, if we give them uh, credit, which I don't, for being sincere, that they're wanting to feed the world, or something, you know, I don't even give them that. But let's just say, you know, for our sake of argument, there are always these consequences that are completely ignorant of. And it's a little bit arrogant as well that they would say, let's, we, we can alter the DNA of food, we can insert genes from other things to tolerate more pesticides, and we're gonna, not going to have any negative outcome or effect from that. And of course, it, it, it is rely, it has really caused an increase in the use, for instance, of pesticides. Like they argued, well, if we can genetically modify this plant, we can use less pesticides. That's what they said. That is nonsense. Because they're creating plants that are sicker, that are more ill, which requires more toxic treatment, right? Which we know doesn't really get to the real root of the problem, but it masks it or kills something temporarily. But in the meantime, if you subsist on those foods, inevitably, on top of what was already wrong with them, now you add the genetic modifications, we don't know how we're going to interact with these foreign strange proteins. There's never been before in existence in creation. Exactly. And they're going to be pro-inflammatory. And inflammation, of course, could be anywhere in the body. And you mentioned some of the areas that we see these lesions and things occurring. It is not a surprise. It should be a surprise to no one. But we don't have scientists anymore. Mm -hmm. We have re religious scientism. You know, this worship of science, and they don't question it. And of course, when I you know raise the opposition and call it abominable, right? What they're doing. What other word can you say? What other word is there to describe the monkeying with the genetic integrity of species? And it's not like cross or, or let's say breeding strengths into plants over generations, which farmers have been doing forever. And that's different. But going in there and splicing, cutting out genes and putting them in like that, that is something that is horrific and it always ends up in disaster. Although we don't have a lot of recorded history going back to the time when evidently, and I've read that this has been done before with equally bad results. But the human species is seemingly loath to learn from our mistakes of the past. Thankfully, we're here at a place where we can actually speak freely and truthfully about this, so hopefully people will recognize how dangerous it is. Right, absolutely. Um, listeners out there, one thing I do want to categorically emphasize here is we're not against science. We think science is wonderful, true science. Unfortunately, the majority of science in is really, I guess, in the pocket of industry nowadays. Uh, especially with regards to agriculture, regards to seeds, patents. Uh, I interviewed Michael Murphy on my show on Wednesday of this week and he talked about 2009 there was a patent granted to a particular agricultural company for seeds that resist aluminum. And of course they're spraying tons and tons of aluminum in the air with chemtrails. So this is something that's going on. There's a lot to talk about. Robert and I just had a short little time to talk today, and I'm sure Robert will be on the show soon. But please do tune in to Robert's show. I'm going to give the mic back to Robert so he can tell you how to listen to his show. This is a combined effort, folks. We're all working together to get the knowledge out to you, the public, so you can make healthier choices and create health in your life. So Robert, please tell them about your show sure. and how they can listen to some of your information. So if you want to learn more, just go to my website at robertscottbell.com. That'll link through to the, the shows that I do six days a week, Sundays on GCN, and uh, Monday through Friday through naturalnewsradio.com. That's with Mike Adams and Natural News. And we are literally rocking the health world, all of us together in this. And uh, we can't get enough of this information out here. That's why we want to do it 24-7. So tell your friends. If you think they know about us yet, they probably don't. Don't assume it. A lot more people need to learn about this message, and we're here to deliver it. Thank you so much, Robert. Have you on the Thanks show soon. Good to see you. Thank you. You too.